Greg Gorey. So this band, it's obscurity. Sorry, my buddy's trying to call me right now. <laughs> no, John Adams, you can't talk to me. So this band, Obscurity. That's what we're listening to right now. Here's a shout out to Ed McCarthy if you're watching out there. Oh man. Buffalo. Buffalo Brutal. gonna be bringing up a lot of buffalo stuff a lot because <laughs> I mean that's where we just grew up right is that my granny hot is your granny hot of course what are you kidding she's dead you would love her you would love her this sounds crushing it is obscurity buffalo they put out this and I believe like two other tracks which were on some compilations which I actually do have on a Another compilation that came out of Buffalo too. That was Grind Rot. That was the uh, that's the drummer from Grotesque Infection. He did a zine and a little tape uh, compilation and stuff like that. So there's a different obscurity tune on that. Fucking right, man. But yeah, obscurity, literally, man. Like it is, it is heavy. Let's just put it on the other side. Just the way it's recorded. No, that's the wrong one. There it is. There's four songs on this demo. So the demo is Visions of Gehenna. Yeah, Visions of Gehenna. That's what's going on there. But it's all about the buffalo, right? Grotesque Infection, actually, CDN Records. Complete demo collection just came out with live tracks with two songs never recorded. So you can get that through CDN Records. CDNRecords.com. Grotesque Infection. I gotta figure out what I'm doing with shirts. Uh, that, eh? Another buffalo. Buffalo, man. They're the ones that influence me. Close to, buried beneath from Rochester. I'm gonna I'm gonna pit my band too. I, I started a band back in the day too, Mangled Human Compost, and it was because uh, because of Buffalo. I just want to, uh, is there any way to get that grotesque infection shirt? Not yet. You just hold your horses. And then Carnal Dissection was a big part of, uh, of the Buffalo scene. Mr. Dennis Glinsky, who was in Tyrant Sin with like, I believe it was Rob Barrett and Paul Mazurkiewicz from Cannibal. That was their first band. Tyrant Sin, and then he ended up doing Carnal Dissection for a few, and like I said before, if, if you go on, if you go on the Tomb of the Mutilated photo of the band, let's see, I got the tape somewhere, there it is, but like I mentioned before, it's ripped apart. It's ripped apart. Hold on a sec here. Hey, Brad, how are you, bro? 
We'll call you in a sec, man. You'll be chatting with Devourment, man. That's fucking awesome. But yeah, I mean, I've 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 played this uh, Tomb of the Mutilated tape a couple times, but where is it? <laughs> so if we go on the photo in the back the photo inside of the band and then we zoom in on Paul and he has a carnal dissection shirt if that's what you if that's what everybody always wonders what shirts are they always wearing well that's carnal dissection and again with CDN records we ended up re-releasing those tapes so Another plug. Yeah, I gotta plug it, right? Uh, where are we here? Oh man, I've destroyed. I destroyed Tomb the Mutilated. But over the years, I had a hard time getting into the bleeding. Just, it went different, right? But it was always Tomb Butchered. And I end up going towards Butchered. I'm more of a butcher, that birth guy. Anyways. Yeah, Grotesque Infection again, got the demos, got the demos there, and then Disgorged, or Disgorged there, which uh, actually we're going to be chatting with Brad about, because Brad's, uh, Brad's in the know of Disgorged, and that's, uh, that's actually fantastic. Great beer, great beer. Zwick. I'm all about the European beers. Like I said, man, ever, ever since I went to Poland and I started the Tiski, and then it was like, well, if you like Tiski, you like Stiegel. If you like Stiegel, you like Zwek. If you like Zwek, you like Lijak or whatever that is, that other Polish beer, but all, all of the region, right? So, uh, so yeah, we got obscurity in the background, man. That's fucking unbelievable. Actually, another shout out. Let's do another shout out to this band here, Pestilength from Spain. These guys have that, I wouldn't say they're like Portal, I wouldn't say they're like Gorguts, newer Gorguts. They have styles and their own twist. That's all I'm gonna say, they're not ripping the bands off, but Pestilength, Pestilength. P-E-S-T-I-L-E-N-G-T-H, Pestilength. Yeah, killer band. Buffalo, they had a sound like nowhere in the world. Um, so earlier, I was listening to this, just getting prepped, right? Had to make some food. I was kind of rushed today. It's my lady's birthday coming up, and uh, she's turning 40, so, you know, I had to go out and grab some stuff, you know. Shh, don't tell her. She said, not on Facebook, so don't tell her. Anyways, so cranking some altar. And I totally forgot, I don't know, personally I kind of forget what I have sometimes. Not that what I have sometimes, I just overlook stuff because you're just I'm so used to seeing this for 30 some years, 30 years, right? So I pop it on, man, I'm like, oh wow, I totally forgot how good this was. Alter from Sweden, not the Alter from Just doing my research too from the Netherlands. See? From the Netherlands. They're the ones that did Eagle Art and all that other stuff. But then there's this Swedish altar. And this was on uh, Wild Rags Records, which is always, always cool to see that logo. Wild Rags Records. Fucking unbelievable, man. I swear. It's so good. I forgot I had it. Oh, yeah, and Eternal Torment too. We'll always go with that Eternal Torment. I seen these guys play at that uh, campaign for musical destruction tour with the uh, Carcass Cathedral, Brew of Truth, and Napalm. That was Necroticism, Utopia Banished. Mm. Scourge are so underrated. You're fucking right they are. Fucking right they are, bud. Oh boy. Bye, la, la, la.
Hey, there he is. Hold on a sec here. Let's get this volume going. Oh. Hold on a sec here. Oh, uh, well, look at that. Uh oh. We got some pandemic going on. Hang on. I got it. He's, he ain't one up Wow. going on over there? Are you playing some guitar over there? Is that what you're doing? <laughs> I don't think he can hear us. <laughs> Who are you? Who are you? Who are you? Uh, I don't know. You don't know anymore? I, I don't know. It's, uh, what am I doing here? What are you doing? I don't know, man. We're hanging out because there's nothing else to do. Exactly. Literally. I'm the drummer for Devourment. Oh, yeah. That's Brad. He's the drummer from Devourment. Who's that guy? Who's that guy? Who's the other guy? We get the guitar tech. <laughs> the other guy. Guitar tech? My name's Joe. Joe the guitar tech. Yeah. That's great. Do you My write name's Chris? Do you write the do you write the riffs? In, in the you write writes many riffs. You yeah, write some of them. Oh. All the good ones. Basically <laughs> just the good ones. <laughs> well that's great. So when did you come into the band? Yeah. Joe the guitar tech? 
Chris is distracting. He does that a lot. <laughs> well, just just when devourment kind of formed after that, right? You you you, you yeah. said that, right? Yeah. Ninety seven. Yeah, we did. A, it was just that three piece, basically vocals, guitar, drums, and we did the impaled demo, uh, which was like the first, you know, anything we put, you know, recording. And then that led into getting Kevin on second guitar and backup vocals. And then we obviously went through some some things with Wayne and uh, got Ruben on vocals. And that was the, I think, you know, the, the first complete realization of environment when we went to record and less than decapitated. And then um, that was the first full length. So that was kind of the first full-fledged version of the band, I think. So what was that? What was that? One, three, eight? Yeah, one three was a weird thing. It was kind of a, uh, we had already broken up by that point, I think, a year or so. <laughs> and then our manager, the guy also created our the, the Darwin logo, Pound, Paul Hebert, uh, had this idea along with Wayne, I think, and uh, do, and maybe Majewski as well, Mike Majewski, to come back and kind of record one, one more song, one original song, and make a compilation of the, uh, add that to the MTE album and the Impaled demo and kind of put that whole, you know, our whole product that we put up at that point as one kind of the last for all kind of thing. And we just came in the studio and Mike had this riff and me and him worked on it and came out with Baby Killer, which became this, you know, huge song for whatever reason, and kind of <laughs> thrown together in the studio in maybe a couple of days from what I remember. <laughs> and we just recorded that put it out and people went, I think, were good shit over at 138 and they did for but we, you know, had a decent foothold with, with MTV coming out, just kind of lighting the burner, I guess, for 138. Right on. So, how did you guys go ahead and get into uh, United Guttural Records at the time? Because that's when, that's when I found out about Devourment was, yeah, like probably 98, 99. And, right. our, and our buddy from uh, Rotting, Corey, gave me uh, some CDs like Malignancy, uh, Deaden, and um, I believe Skinless was on at that time too. And right. Devourment was one of those bands that kind of stuck out. And you, we, we've talked about this a couple times. Sorry, sorry, Joe, the guitar tech. We're just gonna just gonna do some history here first. <laughs> He's gonna come in hard pretty soon, so don't worry about it. <laughs> So we always talk about Discord, yeah. Discord there, the right? Team. There's there's the for me the most underrated brutal death metal band of that era. Them and Scabbard Remnants are my two biggest influences that most people, you know, I mean people are hearing about it more now, but for a long time no one ever knew who those bands were. And just me being into like when I was creating the whole vibe of the government, the sound and everything. It was, you know, putting all these bands together that I liked and taking the best parts. I liked that of Suffo and Pyrexia and Eternal Weeding and, you know, definitely the New York bands, Campbell, Eosine. But uh, when I heard Disgorge, I can't remember how I found that. Somebody gave me a tape because that was a huge still and Dave Coros is my favorite drummer, death metal drummer of all time. And I heard him on Death on Love Creation Eternal and I just became obsessed with that dude. And somebody told me, you need to hear his band before my level of creation. I was like, well, what, what's that? And they played for me. I was like, all right, I'm probably going to not like the band, but love his drumming. And I listened to it. I was like, that is like the ultimate thing that I want to do. That was like the closest to what I had in my head and what I wanted to devour it sound like, honestly. And uh, yeah, I straight up stole three or four of his drum fills and drum parts and put them in MTV songs. And uh, they're just blatant ripoffs because I just... He just wrote the best stuff I ever heard. But yeah, people that into any kind of brutal death metal that haven't heard that need to need to check out Disgorge. I know everybody, you know, loves Disgorge or Disgorge Mexico. And that's that's great too. I love those bands are amazing as well. And you know, definitely top tiers. But Disgorged from New York, Buffalo is you know un unknown awesome. But like the the important uh, bands that pretty much started Slam. Yeah. They had the groups. Yeah, because like we were this Texas band, and we're, like, we're obsessed with all these Slam 
you know, groove-oriented death metal bands, like I said, uh, repeat elation, piracy, throw up with stuff up. Um, you know, they did fast stuff and did all the other stuff, but they had those parts, right? We're like, we're like, oh god, that's. And then you could see the band start kind of focus, hone in on that. And we even had like, we were these like Texas kids who got obsessed with New York death metal, and it was funny because like we were just like trying to be. And Dying Beast too was a huge influence, obviously. Um, but you know, same kind of vibe, East Coast, Upper, you know, uh, Maryland kind of thing, Maryland, New York, and. Uh, yeah, we like image wise, music wise, everything. We were just like trying to ape the Texas version of what we thought New Yorkers did or what New Yorkers would be like. Because, you know, they thought they, were, they must be the coolest fucking people, the most <laughs> hardcore. And it was so hilarious because, like, when we first, first played our first show in New York, um, I remember 98, something like that, 1998, and it was with. Um, Dehumanized hooked it up. We were playing uh, George Dehumanized. Huge shout out to him. And um, we played. A show. I can't remember where. It was this little club in somewhere. In New York. <laughs> but like, we got there, and like our guitar player Brian, he been um, put his hair in like bra- long braids and stuff, and like thought we were gonna like try to be like this, you know, '70s New York hardcore looking dudes to try to fit in. And we got there, and I think we were we scared most of the New York people away. <laughs> they were way more normal looking and we were like the Texas weirdos <laughs> so that was that was kind of funny to us because we were trying to be like you know hard and tough and all this other stuff but that was funny right on right yeah, on New York, huge, huge influence yeah New York literally man I believe and I've said it before I have a I wrote this little article on on metal injection and what I thought was the origins of slam myself and right. disgorged Grotesque infection, uh, suffocation, uh, they were kind of like these landmark bands, internal bleeding, right? These New yeah. York bands, like they just took that, those brutal, you know, chugs and then just made more chugs. And then obviously you fell into that spell like myself also. <laughs> Good shot, Chris. Um, nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, everyone was, was focusing on, like, you know, we knew what we liked. I just, like, I think the only rule I had is um, player beats. I think that was about about it. So that's, we focused on, you know, the grooves and the slams and the hooks and all the other stuff. Um, fast level, kick, you know, blasting, everything else. And um, I think that's the only thing that kind of made us slightly different is that we came at the New York sound from this kind of Texas filter. Um, you know, I think that's the only thing that kind of differentiated us a lot from all the other New York bands like internally and stuff we were doing just straight up slam, uh, you know, you know, from start to finish, which is awesome. We love that stuff. And that's a huge influence, but that's not, a, you know, our version was kind of a tweak on that idea, I guess. Oh, big time, big time, man. Fucking molesting the decapitated. That's, like that album, it, it just doesn't sound like anything else. The vocals were ridiculous. Uh, right. You're you had like were, were you doing gravity blasts or were you, or were you just going like just like tap tap tap? No, tap, that's kind of an interesting story that I guess a lot not a ton of people know outside of Texas or whatever. It's like this was years before I ever even heard of gravity blasts, like maybe a decade or anything like that. Yeah. And the the band that we stole our singer Wayne from was this local band called Meatus, who were amazing, but they were kind of like a Mr. Bungle, really crazy, insane band. And they had this drummer named Eric. And, uh, you know, everybody back then was in the arms race trying to play faster and, and all that kind of thing, because when it was first starting out, yeah, now everybody's, you know, blazing, amazing. But, um, he did this thing live, I think I, I caught him doing, which was a straight up cheat, right? Anyone else would call it that. Where he was playing, you know, maybe a mid tempo blast, and he couldn't play it fast. So he was doing it with two hands, with no cymbal. But, you know, I was like, music and guitars and everything else is so loud. If you miss a cymbal hit for like, you know, several measures, you're not really going to notice it too much. Because, and I was like, I was just hearing this. I was like, holy crap! And I watched him do it from the side stage, and he was just doing that single stroke roll with two hands. And I was like, oh crap! I can play buzz balls. <laughs> I'm from, you know, I come from a snare marching background. So I'm like, I could do what he did and just like make it insanely fast. 
You know, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna cheat, I'm gonna cheat as hard as I can. <laughs> So, <laughs> but like you said though, but like you said though, you're from a marching band, like so that's yeah. it's not cheating. That's just that's just how you did, yeah, it, right? Right. It's the same thing. Like everybody now does double stroke rules on the feet. This is the same thing for the hands. Yeah. It's you know a double stroke press rule. Um, so yeah, and, and you know you do it fast enough, and everything is so chaotic. If the symbol is cut out for a couple measures, so what, right? So, and people bought it, I guess. <laughs> And then I see, you know, John Lunch just start getting everybody to do gravities on, which I do now too. I'm like, that's much smarter. <laughs> it's, it's technically not as fast as a buzz because you're using one hand, but it's, right. you know, it gets the job done. That, you know, it's still another, it's another tool in the arsenal. Of course. I always thought that was one, I, my approach to drumming and death metal and drumming and specifically development is using every type of blast beat, every type of kind of thing we could do. Because I liked all of that, like the old school blast. So like, you know, there were certain bands, you know, um, that only did one type. Or you know, Cannibal. I love Cannibal, but Paul does the hammer blast, and that's it. But he does it amazingly, and it fits, and that's great. But I, you know, and then I hear Flow from Cryptopsy doing a hyper so I'm like, holy crap! I need to add that to my thing. Then you hear Pete Sample. I'm like, I want to do that. So I just tried to do like every single type of, you know, blast or weird thing I could do to kind of. Stay within the envelope of brutal death metal, but expand that as far as I could within those constraints. Right. Yeah. Because I mean, like, the difference obviously everybody knows between death, brutal death metal, death metal, or whatever. Death metal, straightforward. Like you said, yeah. it's like the hammer blasts, uh, like Cannibal. They don't really go too much faster. Pretty, you know, not simple, but s more simple. Right. And then the, the brutal, they always want to go faster. They always want to go heavier, more gutturals. Uh, and like you, said, like you said, man, you're just trying different drum techniques because, I mean, Brutal Death Metal just needs to do more than just... <laughs> yeah, and, and, and that went to the crux of, like, the idea. I mean, you've seen the... That was never written out, but I see it now on T-shirts where fast to sickest, heaviest kind of, is kind of our mantra for the background. We wanted to be the most extreme in every single regard. I wanted to be the fastest on blasts. I wanted to be the slowest on slams and crushing the ribs. I wanted to have the lowest vocals ever, you know, I wanted the S everything, you know, the craziest everything. So that's why and I knew doing that, we could push the envelope, and but people were going to get alienated. That's a fun, funny thing I saw on Facebook the other day, was people posting about, like Mike from uh, Waking Cadaver, about like people who got into us in like the early 2000s, mid 2000s, that kind of thing, when they first heard some of the stuff, almost everybody said when they first heard about it, it was too much. It was like too over the top that they couldn't quite wrap their head around it, which I totally kind of get. And then you know, they come back to it later. I know that was surprising me at first, but the more I hear people saying it, the more I can understand it. Because I knew when we made that kind of music, obviously you're, you have a very small window of people that are going to get it, right? Right. So if you're going to get beyond that at all, those people are going to have to either come around, I guess, at some point, or other people are going to have to go, let me listen to that again. Maybe I didn't get it. That right. kind of thing. Like, I think even the first time when we put it out in Paled, or one of our first shows ever was with Dying Fetus in Dallas. And it was like, we'd been around as a band maybe six months, a year, or something like that. And I think they heard some of our stuff, and they were like, it's it's too over the top for, for like, John Gallagher. I kind of, like, I was kind of like, oh, that crushed my heart, because, like, Gallagher's, John Gallagher's, like, my hero. It's like, I'm Dying Fetus is my favorite overall band at the time. And it was like... Well, that's kind of good and kind of bad, and, but I guess it kind of worked out in our favor. You know, we just we said screw it. If you can't, if the riffs aren't intelligible, you can't hear every note and all such that. I don't care. I, I would sacrifice all that clarity or precision or technicality or show off shit to be more brutal. Right. You know what I mean? To to, be, to just go for an aesthetic over that idea of what you know musicality or technical proficiency is that kind of thing. Right, because during the mid two thousands, also during the MySpace days, um, you had like what I seen when I mean just growing up death metal anyway. So I I, I focused on you know what was on MySpace, and you'd always see uh, Severed Savior. Uh, yeah. You'd always see Abominable put Putridity, and right. and you'd always see Job for a Cowboy, right. <laughs> Those were like the three bands that were literally like 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 this new scene that was kind of happening, 
So when right. everybody started listening to, you know, how brutal Abominable was and all these other bands, they kind of opened their eyes to just like death metal, I guess. Yeah. Right. It's Wait. like a gateway to it, 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 exactly. It's the gateway. It literally was because Job yeah. Job took you know Slam, but still had that you know brutal deathcore sound. Uh, Abominable Putridity literally was just Slam after Slam after Slam yeah. after Slam, and um, Severed Savior were just like they had that flashing logo on MySpace that like everywhere you see it, it was just like black white white black black white white black and. Yeah, like they were totally the gateway bands, and so like I can see how you're saying in the mid two thousands, people started opening their eyes because all of right. a sudden, all of a sudden, it's getting cool. And there's Devourment, who's already been doing this shit for the last uh, while, anyways. Right. I mean, that was another thing is like to that kind of same idea of those mid two thousands core bands and whatnot, um, like. I think I talked to and reached out to the, like the Despised Icon guys like, years ago. Another one. Played with them and, uh, I, yeah, I talked to them off and on, you know, and from day one, they've always maintained, you know, told me how we were one of those bands that kind of really influenced them. And like, I can kind of hear it in their music. Yeah. And certain songs, like you made in early 2000s, but you know, Joe Blow was listening to MySpace and Despised Icon back then would have no idea who Devourment is, you know, unless you know they dug deep or that kind of thing. We were still kind of, even though it was you know, early internet days, it's still underground death metal. It but, totally you know, was. Back then, we used to call it, right. We we call all of it underground, underground. Of course. Now I guess technically things underground, since you know everyone's on the internet, but it was what it was, and it's, it was cool to to see like these up and coming bands that were getting success and like who I thought were pretty cool. I, I was a fan, I despised Icon straight up. Oh, the that first go. album! Holy yeah. shit! Yeah. Holy shit, man! Like it, it had that technicality. Like it had that little bit of grindcore, but it had that, yeah. it had that, like that technical death metal, and then it had that slam. Like they punched it hard. Yeah, I think they, I think they did it better than, than anyone else. When you know, I was into them and some of the other bands, so early Suicide Silence, or like White Chapel. That kind of stuff, same thing, and it kind of, I could kind of tell, like, all right, they've heard something, you know, yep. that somebody did, maybe not us, but maybe us. No, totally, it's true. Like, I mean, I like, like, like you brought up Suicide Silence, uh, White Chapel, and stuff, right? I'm not exactly, right. I'm not the biggest fans of that stuff, but when right. it first came out, obviously, you know, I'm gonna, I, I gotta check this shit out, there's new bands, what's going on, right. and there were parts on there that you're like, yeah, I, you know, you can't deny how heavy this yeah. shit is, right? There's like, no way they came out of, came up with that stuff in a vacuum, it's like, they built on other stuff just the same way, you know, built development on the backs of Disa and Campbell, yeah. everybody up. And Waking the Cadaver, there's another example. Yeah, exactly. Totally, totally. So where's 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 Joe the guitar tech? What's going on? Chris, I think you're up, man. I'm, I'm gonna grab a beer too. So uh, what, what are you doing? Are we looking at your crotch still? He's, I think he's having a smoke in the yard. No, no. He's like, making dip. Like a, it's like a, like a stew. Got to be a stew. Okay. <laughs> All right. Try to grab another beer. Wow. What are you what are you, what are you doing? Are you destroying stuff? <laughs> I'm making food. Oh, that's great. What are you making? What are you making? Oh, God damn, yeah, fuck! Fuck! It's kind of big on there. Uh, you better be joking. Uh, carrots. <laughs> Three carrots, yeah. Okay, thank oh, you. Oh, he did. He tricked but us. He tricked that's us. That's the one is your, your only yeah. guitar player chopping carrots. Dude. Dude, is that he, David Blaine? Is that what's going on over here? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Wow. One more David Copperfield one. Dude. I like Copperfield, but you don't have the mustache. Do you have a mustache or do you just have a beard? I can't tell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's, just, it's pretty much a full beard. Yeah. Oh. A little, little white one. That's yeah, cute. That's cute. Mostly trim things. All right. When did you come into the band? Let's let's talk about you now. 
You said cute. Yeah, I did say cute. Oh, uh, cool, cool. Uh, okay, <laughs> cute. Uh, like two thousand five ish, I guess formally. Um, I was approached about uh, doing drums actually first because Brad wasn't interested when they were uh, reforming in like two thousand four or so, and uh, that kind of fell through. Um, and then they got together with that lineup uh, with uh, Eric Park on drums and uh, Ruben on guitar. Mike Matuski on vocals, and then uh, came in at that point on a bass. So uh, yeah, like 15 years, 14 years. Uh, so you came in on the second album? Yeah, uh, second Bush of the Week, and uh, yeah, I wasn't on the first one, I, but I was on the second. Yeah. I like the first one better, to be honest. <laughs> I think, uh, Me too. Me too. It's weird. It's not weaker. Going with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, no, no. Chris, will, Chris will never lie to you. <laughs> yeah, we'll All right, Joe, the guitar tech. So you've written yeah. some riffs, then I'm assuming. I'll just tell you a really funky version of it too. Uh, so yeah, on this new album, uh, a little couple, a couple of riffs on some other albums, but uh, this is the first one where I really had more of a creative input. And, uh, Contributed in a, a major way. So, uh, yeah, what's the risk? I mean, there aren't really any risks, honestly. Like, we just went with licks on the album only. You know, like, uh, like mainly just, you know, it's just like the stems of leads, really. Uh, there's, there's not like, like actual, you know, like, like an ACDC yeah. would play or something. Right. So, that's the kind of like there's, a there's, no, there's no risks, it's all licks. No riffs, all licks. That's, 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 that's a great, that's a new devourment right there. Right. No risk, all licks. All licks. Yeah. I love it. Uh, that's the new, uh, that's the new no game black one. <laughs> it's still so, up there somewhere. So you, so you weren't on the, uh, so you weren't on Relapse's sewage album. You were. Yes. I was. Yes. I was. He was, yeah. Yes. Brad Wilson. Yeah. He all three. Uh, he all three. Uh, yeah. What is it? Uh, yeah. What is it? Butcher. What are they in order? I can't remember. Butcher and. Uh, yeah, Butcher would be Tommy Carnivore and Conceive and Sewage. Conceive. And uh, the uh, there's like a, a competition where we covered Gamble Corp. Um, like a four-way split. I was on to. I think that was the first recording I actually did. The fan. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. So, uh, all the the middle kind of stuff. Right. So, what are you doing uh, right now then? Where 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 are you yeah, chilling? Yeah, you know what that stuff is written about. I'm proving it. I'm sorry. I was, I was saying something about but yeah. Sorry, man. Sorry. <laughs> There's such a delay. It's uh, we're having a hard time here. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Seems pretty real time. Right? You, you, you're like super blurry, Chris. Yeah, you're really blurry. Is your is your signal crap? You guys are like crystal here. Are you on Wi Fi? I, I don't know. Stand <laughs> next to the right. Oh, wow. Yeah, that looks terrible. I think over I need there. a better data plan. Why are, why are Kim's phone? Who's, who's mobile? Yeah, your 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 footage is terrible. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry to say. You look like a brown blah, blah. I can't see. Because Chris is a really good looking guy, and it's like a shame that you can't tell. <laughs> Can you hear us, Chris? Oh, he's he's frozen. Yeah, he's frozen. He's straight up frozen. He's frozen right now. So when yeah, did you? I tried, to, I tried to turn the Wi-Fi off and just use data, and that did not work. I mean, I'm hearing you slightly better. Whatever you did may have helped a little. I'm back okay. on the Wi-Fi. Yeah, I think you put it close to your face. I can kind of see your face a little bit. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. Sure. So, so you Keep guys, going, so you guys work nice, here. perfect. So you guys are working on new material, right? 
Yeah. Uh, sort of, yeah. Yeah, I've been uh, writing some stuff, sending out some demos, trying to uh, get them back in Brad's head so we can yeah. have uh, the guitar and drum unit working on new shit. Yeah, Chris, Chris is like a James Hetfield riff monster. But he just cranks out a million riffs and like sends them to me and we're going to you know, kind of work them out a little bit. And then we get in the jam room, you know, when the apocalypse is over. And then we can start working, uh, you know, working on the songs properly. Nah, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah. Uh, Maybe we can do some writing with this. Uh, what was that? <laughs> what did he say? I mean, the writing with this Facebook platform, man. The timing's really good. I think it's going to help our, uh, yeah. our timing. Yeah, we should do this. Yeah, totally. I mean, that, that's what I was going to say. Like, as long as you have at least a three or four second delay, then you're pretty much going to get your songs, like, like perfect, right? Tight, tight, tight. Tight, tight. tight. <laughs> <laughs> so, you guys were supposed to tour with, was that Misery Index? Hey Chris, <laughs> what, what band were we supposed to do? The fucking Canadians! We ruined my career! It was, it was, uh, Nails, Nails was headlining, and it was, uh, Nails and Misery Index, and us, like, somebody, I can't remember the other band. Outer Heaven. Yeah, it was supposed to happen, but, you know, it didn't. Uh, okay, never mind. We'll yeah. go on to the next subject. No, I'll talk about it. I'll love to talk about that. Look at that one. Oh. Uh, we, had, yeah. we have some issues. No, basically, fuck Canada. Yeah, Canada's can, can, yeah. Canadian. We always, we always had it's problem. Canada. We always have someone who can't get into Canada. There's always one person, and that other person is me. Uh, it's my fault. Almost, almost. I would blame nails, frankly, uh, because we were trying to find a way around the two Canadian dates, and thought that was a viable solution. Uh, our booking agent uh, brought that to them, and then the next day he said they didn't like that, and we were kicked off the tour. So, you know, blame Canada. Blame Canada. No, man, we we wanted you. Yeah. That was the whole thing. We wanted you. We were waiting for you. We want to go, but... But this guy. The government. The government. It's the government. The, government. the fucking government. <laughs> why, are you, why are you guys so tough on musicians, man? I know. We're terrible. You come over to the border, you pretty much got to lay down your life and 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 spend another ten grand just to come over for a couple days. It's crazy. Yeah. No joke. We were looking into it. We were, like, trying to make it work. And, like, we went to the fees. And it was, like, eight or nine, ten thousand dollars or something. So we could have done it, but we couldn't afford it. <laughs> Um, so we were thinking, I don't know, you know, if we can buy one of those inflated rafts from Dicks and kind of, you know, swim across or something. Yeah. Uh, you're at Niagara Falls, right? We could, is there a way that we can go up the falls? Shh. Okay. There's lots of there's lots of places. <laughs> okay. See. Keep on looking. Chris, you need to talk to Cam. He'll get us. You don't need coordinates in the forest. He'll he'll put us over. Yeah. Yeah. Will you be my coyote? Yes, I totally will. <laughs> what is it? I'm a coyote. I don't know. <laughs> Let me in. <laughs> we Let were trying. In. We were trying. So, uh, what's in the future for Devourment? Let's talk about what's going on and plans, ideas. Obviously, uh, shows and if they were coming up. Um. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're just gonna ride this thing out, I guess, for the next couple of years, and uh, probably record some shit yeah. while the earth is shut down, while we can't play shows. Um, depending on how things go, we do have. We got hit with it, right? Uh, no, sorry, go ahead, Chris. Oh, sorry about the, the delay. Um, so we, we did have a show uh, on the 22nd, on, you know, like right, right when everything started shutting down, and. Uh, it was going to be really cool, and then it got canceled because of uh, all this stuff. So <laughs> that's, yeah, a, that's a great uh, story. That's a great story, know, man. <laughs> Thank you. Um, but yeah, like we're, 
What Chris is, yeah, set. That's on the world of big pain. We're waiting, we're waiting, waiting on the world to change. Wow. That's pretty good. You like, uh... Has anybody ever seen John Mayer on your show before? You like Tom Mayer? Is that Tom, is, is that John Mayer? It is. That was John Mayer, it was. I thought it was, uh, Matthews. Dave Matthews? Oh, no. It's John Mayer, man. I'm yeah, sorry. Dude. Where is... Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's John Mayer. John Mayer? Yeah, like a horse? <laughs> yes. I drink too much. I drink too much. What? Too much. Too much. Now that's Dave Matthews. That's better. That's, that's pretty that's good. That's pretty yeah. good. So, um... I'm going to get next to the rock. Too much. So what band? What bands are you guys liking lately? Am I on the list? Huge, huge fan. Tiger King. Chris is the eclect, super eclectic one. So go for it, Chris. Um. Uh. Fuck. Uh. Miles Davis. Okay. Yeah. Hold on. I got some, uh, I got some right here too, I think. Joe, you put out a new album? Miles Davis just put out a new album? Yeah. Yeah, fucking Joe and I. Yeah, fucking Joe and I. Yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. know where it is. The new Joe Exotic album. <laughs> I saw Tiger is, is my favorite. Is that Yeah, hell yeah. Wow. You know what? I haven't seen that thing, and I don't want to see it. Oh, come on, man. Everyone's, like, refusing to watch it. Like, it's not... <laughs> You're losing. You refuse. <laughs> I have so to get... It's not watching on popular things, but... If you want to see, like, the worst really thing America has to offer, up. watch that show. Then you'll see these dregs of American society. I already know what it's like over there. I don't want it to get even worse. That's fair. That's fair. I like you Thank guys. You. I like you guys. I don't want to. I, I don't want to think anything different of you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which which the country is just me and Chris like a million times over. That's it. That's it. Just you two. <laughs> That's <laughs> us. <laughs> just a million devourment <laughs> cover bands. Well, like a billion. Like a billion trying to it's just, it's just like a thousand eating brats and a billion shots of quarters. <laughs> and monster trucks. Oh, yeah, man. I like yeah. monster trucks. Yeah, yeah. okay. We love it. Hard wrestling 24 7. Hey, you guys got any, uh, got any last words before we, uh, we kick out of here, perhaps? <laughs> uh. <laughs> No. <laughs> Thanks, brother. Appreciate it. Hope you didn't ruin your show too bad. No, it's okay. Oh, look at that, eh? We are the world. We are the children. Oh, oh it's, it's just fire. Cool, man. We appreciate you uh, coming yeah, to hang bro. out and uh, do this uh, with us. And, and, and... Yeah. Chatting death metal with you. Chatting and chatting death metal, exactly. And especially Mr. Uh, Mr. Thanks, Mr. Bad Internet down there, too. <laughs> my, my internet looks great over here. I think, I think you guys have the problem. I don't know, man. I'm, I seem pretty... So you're, you're those guys. No, I'm pretty my clean. Great. I'm pretty clean up there, so I don't know, I don't know what's going on with you. I look, I look crystal clear, so. I am immaculate. You're, you are you are cute. I look good. Yes. I smell good. <laughs> and I make love good. <sighs> I, I don't make it no good. So, that's fair. But you have a daughter, though, so you're cool. Yeah, you're not I mean, it's just proof that I, I, I can make it not good. <laughs> I'm physically capable of making. I got the parts. I'll take. <laughs> <laughs> so.
so 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 like 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 I mentioned, you guys are just riffing. Like, you guys are just riffing right now, back and forth. That's what you're kind of doing, I guess, because we have time. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, I did want to like say real quick. We had, depending on how you know how bad this thing, if it's ever over or whatever, we did have a committed tour, U.S. tour uh, that we're going to be doing late late this year. It was already it was already kind of in the works with a fairly significant band, and uh, so we'll see how that goes. If that still happens or not. <laughs> Dude, it happens to be amazing. That's a uh, that's a good that's the best your videos look so far. Yeah, it actually it's, does. It, it's pretty crystal clear. It it cleared up as soon as he. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen those videos of? It's your face. 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 You're right. It's your face. My face is normal. Okay. My face is distorted. Have you seen those videos of Anthony Hopkins? It's my fucking me. No. Man. Have you seen the videos Anthony no. Hopkins does on Instagram or whatever? Yeah, you just like... Yeah, you just like I saw that in my port. Yeah, you're all like, losing your shit online. Is he is he to Christopher Lee? What? Is he the next Christopher Lee? Is he the next Christopher Lee? Is he going to make a metal album? I, in his I, that would be great. I hope so. Hannibal will do a metal? Sure, man. Yeah, why not? You know what I'm talking about? Good <laughs> You know, really like the fucking hammer dome. What was that one band you were playing earlier? Obscurity. Made a metal album. Obscurity. Yeah, they're a buffalo. They're a buffalo. Yeah. Right. That, that sounded cool. Might check that one out. Yeah. Like yeah. Vis Visions of Gehenna. Buffalo. Yeah, Buffalo. Yeah. Visions of Gehenna. Oh, yeah. Obscurity. I'll send you Did the you links. See? Yeah. yeah. Uh, Do you see the scanner remnants is back? By the way? Yes, they're playing um they're playing Quebec Death Fest. That's awesome. That's one of those you now if you just get Discord back together it'd be you know perfect. I know, I keep telling the guitarist Chris, because uh I he uh, they st obviously still in Rochester and uh right. I keep bringing it up to him all the time, so Tell him Brad Bowerman will pay him ten dollars if he discords back together. Buddy, who wouldn't do that? Right? That's a Chris 10, man. Drinks it. <laughs> uh oh, I'm coughing. Oh. You got the run up. I got the. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, thank you very much for hanging out, and uh, hopefully, we can do this again, eh? Yeah, man. Good talking to you, brother. We'll talk to you later. Thanks, th yeah. thanks, thanks, Joe, the guitar tech. Keep it fucking thick. <laughs> Every day. Stay thick. <laughs> Let's see here. Uh oh, he's. Oh, you're left. He's not. He doesn't want to go away now. No, I ain't fucking leaving. Oh. So First fuck, enough. fuck Brad, eh? So so okay. Well then, let, then want to all right. Well then, let's keep going. If you didn't sign off, so where did you come from? Were you in some old bands before? I was in Kill the Client, uh, which you know had a fairly notable career. Kind of after I left, um, started with the uh, with them on drums, which is kind of when Norman approached me about uh, doing the drums back in the day, uh, and that's about it. Done some other bands, but you know, nothing that anyone would know. But uh, that's where I come from. And then, you know, 15 years of government. Uh, also played in a band called Intestinal Fortitude. That's uh, pretty fucking awesome. You know, so uh, check that out. Shout out to Intestinal Fortitude. Fucking A. So, what made you get in contact Rest with Devourment? Um, they, uh, they saw my old band kill the client, I guess, like individually, each of them. And, uh, Ruben, I think was friends with some of those members too. And, uh, they just approached me one night at a show and, you know, they're like, Hey, we're thinking about reforming development and, you know, we'd like you to try out for 
my ground position. Um, so they, they just came up to me. It was kind of weird. I mean, I had actually wanted to try out before when I heard development was trying to reform, but I wasn't really like ready. Didn't really have like the the clout or the reputation or anything. So it's kind of ironic, you know, coming back around in that form. And uh, looking at so you came back and was stuff already written? Because you came back as what a drummer. Uh, was going to, and then, uh, that fell through, um, just due to people I was working with having issues with it, uh, for some reason. So I, I declined and then they ended up contacting me a year later to come play bass. So they had already written that first, uh, album after they came back, which of the week, um, they already recorded one version of it with Ruben playing bass. And, uh, when they started wanting to play shows again, they needed a bass player. So, uh, they heard I could play big well and hit me up, I guess, as a consolation prize for the, the drumming gig falling through. So uh, I was playing bass for the last, like, for like 2005 to 2014 or so. Um, and then it shifted around in, and then I moved to guitar. Uh, just because I like the instrument better. You know, it's kind of a more powerful thing to play um, in the band. And that's when we got Brad back in, and that's when Ruben switched over to vocals. And, that's so when we started sounding like a fucking killing machine. Sweet. So you're saying after Butcher the Wheat came out, then the band kind of started solidifying itself with like just the members? Uh, yeah, so the first Butcher the Wheat came out and then they got me and we did some, some shit. We did like a that split. Uh, it was like a four-way split called Gore Grind USA or something. And then we re-recorded Butcher the Week. Um, and then we had a pretty good, uh, career with that lineup, you know, playing some, some big festivals. I mean, I think it was kind of like all new territory for the band, uh, getting over to Europe, getting over to Asia, and, you know, just getting some pretty big offers and growing the brand. And went on tour with Cannibal Corpse, you know, uh, went on tour with Cattle Capitation, had some, had some good shit, uh, built up in those years and made three albums and. Skulls. Yeah, just a little bit, eh? There's some lunch meat. So, so you, so you've been on bass the whole time, or guitar? Uh, no. Well, I was on bass until 2014, uh, and then I switched to guitar. At that point, so I've been playing guitar for the last what? Yeah. Right. Five six years. So then, that's when you came into your own and yeah. started smashing riffs and everything like that. Yeah, like my hair started growing out shit and I just became like, <laughs> like the guy you're seeing right now. <laughs> Sorry, the dog's just hanging out behind me, just chewing his ear off. my guitar is basically a big finger. Right. The dog's chewing himself? Oh, the dog's just chewing on shit all the time. Yes. Dogs like chewing on stuff. I mean, what can you do, right? Damn. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I like chewing on stuff too. Oh, it's like right. chewing on rubber. Yeah, pretty much. Out. Pretty much. Pretty much. So, so literally, like, are you kind of, are you turning into the guy that's coming up with riffs, or everybody's coming up with riffs? Oh, we got some animals there too. Look at that. Hello, kitty cats. Yeah. Yeah. We got maniac and chaos. My, uh, my daughter and granddaughter. Yeah, so I'm, I'm writing uh, kind of most of the stuff now. Um, the last album we had Kevin Clark uh, kind of rejoin the band for a little bit and then uh, leave in the middle of the writing process. So he wrote uh, a couple songs. Um, uh, you know, started them off. We, we ended up kind of adding what he said. Damn. <laughs> Mom is uh, fucking being an asshole. <laughs> I guess the process now, um, going forward, I think Ruben's going to start throwing down a little bit more again, uh, cause Ruben wrote a lot of stuff, uh, from the, like Bush of the Week, Unleash the Carnivore, 
in season two. He's like, he wrote most of that stuff on guitar. So I think he'll probably start kind of contributing again. Um, you know, uh, we might get some input from Dave, um, our bass player. Um, but for the most part, I'm trying to like just start writing everything and demoing it with a drum machine and shit. Yep. Swinging my fucking dick. It's all you can do, right? Yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah, cool, man. Well, there's a lot of things. Yeah, yeah. Well, especially with the time that we have now to ourselves. Yeah. The time of the season. <laughs> totally. Uh, all right. Well, I gotta take a piss, so we're gonna end this. Cool. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, thanks. Cool. Devourment. Make sure to keep it fucking keep it fucking brutal. Keep it. Keep it. It's keep, sick. Keep it. Just keep it. Yeah. <laughs> Take it. Sweet. That's how it works. That's how it works. So, that was the guys from Devourment. Cheers, Devourment. What's up? Greg's still hanging out. There's a lot going on. All right, people. Thank you. So, tomorrow we have the band Depraver, which is on Redefining Records, the interview we did on Thursday, last Thursday, with Thomas. Uh, their new band, Depraver, is on his label, and we're going to have, hopefully the internet's a little better tomorrow. That wasn't too bad, as long as nobody talked at the same time. So tomorrow we're going to have them. And uh, that's how it's going to roll. And we got lots lined up for the next little bit. We got almost the next week booked up. I'm not going to tell you what yet. But that's what's going on. So if you want to go, you know, you know, you know what's going on. Killer people. Thank you very much for hanging out.